when you talk about a moment or a match or a pay-per-view that started the downfall of total non-stop action wrestling, 2010's Bound for Glory might be that starting point. Because Bound for Glory 2010, I went into it thinking it was going to be a really good show, and I left it thinking it was terrible. For a lot of reasons. And especially what happened in the main event. But we'll get to that later. TNA Bound for Glory took place from the Ocean Center. The Ocean Center in Daytona Beach has a lot of history. That's where the NWO started. WCW had a lot of uh, Bash at the Beach events there. So it had a lot of history as a wrestling venue. So I was happy uh, that TNA did go there. And I thought that that was fine. But... TNA is Bound for Glory is supposed to feel like a big show. I don't think Bound for Glory 2010 felt like a big show. And especially, once again, because of what happened in the main event. But again, I'll get to that later. Let's start off with some good things about it, because there were some really good things about it, and the first really good thing was Motor City Machine Guns versus Generation Me. That is an opener that you need to watch. That was a really good match, a really solid match. I thought that it got perfect time that it needed, around 13 minutes. Maybe you could argue it could go a little longer, but who cares? It was a really solid match, a really good match between these two tag teams. I thought that these two tag teams back in 2010 had really good chemistry, and it was a really good match for the tag team championships. The right team won, in my opinion. Hey, maybe Gen Me could have won. I wouldn't have been upset by it because this match was really freaking awesome. I remember going back and watching it again and just reminding myself of how great it was. Then you get to the Knockouts title match, the uh, Four Corners match. It was Tara, uh, Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, Madison Rain with the newcomer in TNA at least, uh, Mickey James as the special guest ref. And this match actually wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. Uh, granted, I only really watched this match because Mickey James was there. Sorry to all those other four. But, not a bad match. Uh, ultimately, I think that the right uh, knockout won, because they're trying to set up a feud between Tara and Madison Rain in the future, so I think that Tara winning worked pretty good. So, I was, I was perfectly fine with that. Then you get to the tag, uh, another tag team match, Ink Ink versus Orlando Jordan and Eric Young. A really fun match, a really... Not really a good match. It was just a solid match. Not not that not that spectacular. Uh, I loved when Eric Young and Orlando Jordan teamed up together. I just loved it. Uh, then you get to Jay Lethal versus Douglas Williams for the X Division Championship. This match was okay. Could have been a little more, but it was all right. Uh, I thought that Jay Lethal should have put Douglas Williams over. I thought that Doug Williams could have won this match, uh, but. It was an alright match, because, and, you know, how should I put this? It was an alright match that, unfortunately, began the downfall of this pay-per-view. Because the next match is RVD versus Abyss in this Monsters Ball match. This match bored the shit out of me. And this match had th two and a half months of story to it. And that's the best you got? That's awful. RVD and Abyss in this Monsters Ball match was fucking terrible. And you go back and watch it, and you're reminded of just how bad it is. And especially, you're reminded of what it represents afterwards. And I'll get to that when I'm talking about the main event. You get the three-on-two handicap match between the band and Samoa Joe and Jeff Jarrett. I didn't fucking care about this match either. And I especially didn't care about Jeff Jarrett turning heel. You know, again, I'll get to it in the main event. But I thought that it was the wrong move for Jarrett to turn heel. And especially, like, align himself with the band who the night after or the week after fucking turned babyface. Like, there's just so many things that are that's wrong with this. 
the heel group is now the baby face group. Just no, nothing about nothing about TNA in late 2010 or early 2011 just made sense. I'm sorry, nothing did. Then you get to the uh, lethal lockdown match, EV2 against Fortune. That was a solid match, but the wrong team went over. Why couldn't Fortune win this? You know, you're stuck, you're still stuck on the past. Instead of creating uniqueness and you in your talent, you go back to these old washed up ECW fucks. And it's really sad to consider that the ECW pay-per-view that they threw, I think it was Hardcore Justice 2010, is still the highest rated pay-per-view in TNA history. You know how sad that is? You're supposed to establish an identity on your own, not rehash something and claim that as your fucking identity, because that's not your identity. That's a ripoff. I think that this match was good, but the wrong team went over. Fortune should have went over here. I was a big Fortune fan back then, until they got grouped up with what would become Immortal. Then you get to the main event. And this is the reason why I hate this show. Because you got these three guys, Jeff Hardy, Anderson, and Kurt Angle, who went out there and had a, a really solid to a good match. And it ultimately became all about Hogan, and it ultimately became all about Bischoff, and it ultimately became all about Abyss. And you now turn the most over babyface you have into a heel. And you group up, you, you form this faction together to create Immortal. Immortal's run at the top of TNA was probably the worst main event run of any faction in wrestling history. It was made to establish stars, and it did not do a thing. All it did was focus on fucking Hogan focus on Bischoff. Nothing about Immortal made sense in TNA. And that will go down as TNA's worst faction in its history, and probably one of the worst factions in wrestling history. And that's really sad. Because you think of the, some of the names that were in Immortal, like Flair and like AJ Styles, again, none of them benefited from that. None of them benefited. And that's such a shame to see. Because you could argue that all five members of Fortune could have been world champion. Could have mem you could have made an argument that... Who else? Uh, could have argued that Matt Morgan, I know he was it. Wasn't he in there? No, I'm thinking of something. somebody else. Um... You know what? Honestly, I'm having a hard time remembering it because it was just that bad. It was just that terrible. Going back and looking at it was fucking awful. Everything about this pay-per-view because of the main event was awful. I'm sorry if you liked 2010 TNA and I'm sorry if you liked this pay-per-view, but I didn't for many reasons and they all have to do with Immortal. Immortal should have never fucking formed because it did absolutely nothing.